an Edinburgh lift shaft. 20 year old It was the nine o'clock news that came on and they told me that firefighters and medics were on the scene of an accident down at Monty House. When the telephone rang and my friend says, come down right away, there's something bad happened. And she says, Derek is in the shaft. That's when, you know, I got a, a picture, I thought, no, he's in the shaft. I could see it because we lived in a block to look into, you can see into the shaft through each lift, you know, looking upside, looking for the other elevator coming. And it's just a big black hole that you're looking at. And I thought, he's lying at the bottom of it. And that, that was my reactions. And I thought he was dead. The fire brigade, who'd finally been called by residents who had heard the boys shouting, also expected the worst. But first, they had to find Derek. After cutting the power supply, they began to check floor by floor. We opened the lift door on the seventh floor. I had a look up and down, and there was no sign. I fully expected the chap to be in the basement. Uh, there's traces of blood on the, the guide rails, Harry. Oh, there he's hanging up there at the next floor. I could see a part of a jacket, what appeared to be a jacket hanging with blood on it. And then Paul said, I can see his legs. OK, if we go up to the 10th, we should get him. OK? But they still needed a safe way to get to Derek, and so began the laborious job of winching the lift up to the ninth floor by hand. We decided the, the cliff car was about 15 feet further down, so we decided to wind it up and use the roof of it as a platform to stand on. This is about one of the most difficult I've ever attended because of the dangers for firefighters attending. He could have gone all the way to the bottom if they'd made one little slip at all. They found Derek caught in the lift machinery, part jammed and part hanging from the belt loop on his jeans, a hundred feet over a sheer drop. His leg was very badly gashed. His foot was pretty mangled. He had lacerations in his head and down the back of his neck. I tied a rope round him and climbed up to a concrete parapet above and tried pulling on the rope to lift him, but he was stuck solid, so... We eventually decided we would have to cut away the metal work which was holding him. OK, take up the slack. Uh, take the slack up. No, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to have to cut through. Uh, we're going to have to cut through. Uh, Derek? Derek? Can you hear me there? Derek, I'm Dr. Park from the Royal Infirmary. Can you hear me there, Derek? First impressions on arriving at the incident were what way round is he, what, what bit is where, um, and how on earth are we going to get him out of it? It became pretty clear that this wasn't a standard fall and that there were unusual elements to it. It's simply because of the lack of access to the casualty. Where are you sore? Is your neck sore? OK. His main problems were that he was frightened, that he was in pain, and that he'd lost a considerable quantity of blood. Morphine? Thank you. Uh... Right. Derek, I'm going to give you a jag for the pain, all right? It'll make you feel a wee bit drowsy and dizzy. As soon as we've got that in, then we'll get you out a little uh... chat, OK? Just to hear that he was alive, that was the greatest thing to hear. Oddly enough, I didn't think about his injuries until it hit home about his leg. I didn't think about that. I just thought he's alive. Of, he's, he's not been killed. I think we've done as much as we can oh. in here now, chaps. I think we should probably just try and get him out. OK, feed in the cable. Right, Harry, you want to take the straight? Go the straight. OK, I'm making the cut now. As the metal work holding Derek was cut away, Stuart was being released from the jammed lift and taken to hospital suffering from shock. That's it. OK, let's have some slack on that line. Can okay, somebody lend a hand? Take his head. How on earth did he survive it? It was a quite incredibly lucky escape that he had. If he had fallen on down the lift shaft, I think it would have been a very different outcome indeed. OK, that's grand. Nobody, nobody should ever go off a lift car. If the lift sticks, they should have found the alarm bell, call out, shout at him, but never get out of a lift car. He was very fortunate in this instance. He could have gone all the way to the bottom and me killed. At first, when the lift dragged me, I thought, well, you know, this is me. I mean, I'm dead now. I mean, because I didn't think I was going to survive this. And then when I woke up, it was pitch black and I couldn't see my hand in front of me and I couldn't hear nothing. I thought, well, this must be what that life's like after death. That's what I thought. 
He's lucky he's not lost his leg, he's okay. We don't know the extent as of yet. This will take a long, long time before we find out how good his leg's going to be. Quite a few scars up here in my thigh. Really, that was ripped. But I didn't, I, they didn't know if they were going to be able to save the leg, but I'm just glad they did. <laughs> I would never, ever climb out again. I don't care how panicky I got. I mean, I'm saying that now. I mean, I don't know until I was in that... Whenever